There's no secret. You show up, you know, you show up, you serve other people without the need for pats on the back or wow, you're amazing or whatever. You do it because whatever your gift is, as I always say, to keep it, you have to give it away. You got to share whatever you can with other people. And if you do that without expectation of being rewarded or being put on a pedestal, then your life has a good chance of being good, no matter what kind of ups and downs you have. Welcome to the Spartan Endurance Series on Spartan Up Podcast with host Johnny Wade. Hey Spartans, this next interview is a special one to me. Charlie Engel is a guy who has taken on some of the biggest challenges you can imagine in the endurance world, but he hasn't always been a guy out there conquering the world. In fact, he talks very openly about his struggles with addiction. Charlie has some great, great lessons for how you can use endurance to turn your life around and uh, then to help other people turn their lives around. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by two sponsors, Headspace and The Ready State. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Headspace. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash spartan for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by our friends Juliet and Kelly Starrett at The Ready State. Get a free trial and then save 10% for life by using the code SPARTAN10 when you register at thereadystate.com. Hey Spartans, I am really, really stoked today. We've got a friend back. Charlie Engel has been on the podcast before. And uh, when, when I was thinking about people I wanted to revisit, man, this guy's at the top of my list. Charlie, first of all, I just want to say welcome. And then I'm going to tell them why I'm so excited about you being here. Man, I'm, I'm happy to be back. When I got the call, I was like, yes, I need a, I need a shot of motivation myself. So, so I'd first heard about you, Charlie. I, I saw you in uh, Running the Sahara. And, uh, and I know that uh, there were a couple of uh, books you wrote and were featured in. And you're a guy who's a, a legend in the endurance scene. And I, I first met you on the Spartan Cruise. Uh, you know, Joe invited you out uh, as well as Mike Ward and a couple other endurance people to sort of start to shift the mindset of Spartan over more to that endurance side of things and bring some of that community in. And uh, I just love your stories. And um, so, so I, I want to dive into something specific on this call and we'll, we can go in a million different directions, but, um, but I know one thing that you're very proud of and very public about is, um, is your sobriety and the fact that, uh, that running has helped you a lot with that and endurance has helped you a lot with that. And we're always looking at value we can bring to our audience as far as, you know, something that this person may have a specific perspective on that others may not. So give us a little bit of your backstory and, and how this came about and how running has been so important in that in endurance. Man, I appreciate that question because it's, uh, I, you know, there's other people that talk about this too, but I mean, basically my story is a story of struggle <laughs> and I mean that in the most positive way. You know, some of the things that have happened to me in my past were self-inflicted wounds, and some of them were just things that came out of the blue that, uh, you know, that I didn't expect. But the fact of the matter is, my approach has always been: if I can look at each one of those with, you know, an open mind and a and a curious heart, even when even when it's the most terrible situation or the hardest situation or one that I don't think I'm gonna get through. And my story is in, in a nutshell, for those who don't know me, is um, I've been sober 28 years now. So my, my 20s basically were consumed by drugs and alcohol and this crazy lifestyle that uh, I still was always like the top salesman. And I always thought that if you were the top salesman, you could, you know, have all kinds of bad behavior on the other side and everybody would uh, ignore that bad behavior. And that's just, it's not true. Basically, I was a pain in the ass. I, I still am in a lot of ways. But in those days, it was just, you know, it was just a mess. When I finally got my act together at 29 years old, my first son had been born and uh, I used running Really, I'd been a runner in high school and I'd done some running during my 20s when I would clean up for a week or two or whatever, but I really got serious about running when I got sober. And I ran like 30 marathons in the first three years of my sobriety um, because obviously I had that whole addiction thing under control, right? So, um, you know, it's this idea that 
I, for me, I was like, if I, I can just run the addict out of me, I'm going to like, I'm going to beat that person out of me so that he can't hurt me anymore. And it took me those three years. And I think you'll relate to this and a lot of the listeners, because the addict part of my personality, the obsessive part of me is actually all the best parts of me. Like, I didn't need to get rid of it. I needed to take that energy and that focus that I used to put towards, you know, drugs and alcohol and point that towards something positive. And when I figured out how to do that, all of a sudden my life turned around and I began to create opportunities that, uh, that actually, you know, moved my life forward, made me realize that life is about discovery and that if I can continue to share that struggle with other people, because look, man, the only thing we all share, especially this, this last year or so, is struggle. Everybody's got a different story, but, but struggle is part of our thing. And if we can be open about those hardships and struggle, I think it, it allows other people to realize that uh, you don't have to hide that stuff. Well, two, two things there that you've said that are so key, you know, the one, the idea that, you know, you thought you had to beat this part of your personality out of you and then realized you were just refocusing it, rechanneling it and all the best parts of you were now being used for something healthy. The other side that I think is really key is, you know, they, they've said that a, a big part of addiction is, um, or the, the opposite of addiction is really community. And the idea, you know, that the reason so many people use groups and like Alcoholics Anonymous or any kind of group is because community is the best cure for addiction. So, so you not only have found community, but you've created community. Like, you know, people, people rally around you and you, you put together expeditions that include other people. So, so talk to me a little bit about, you know, some of the things you've done since then, because you, you've taken this, this frenetic energy and said, I'm going to do cool things with it. So, so, so tell me about that and then we'll explore the, the connection. Yeah, well, I've, as I like to say, I've suckered other people into my really bad ideas. And then, you know, we've gone out and taken them on together. And so running the Sahara, I, I, to tell you the truth, I really learned it in the 90s. And that was through uh, adventure racing. And obviously, Joe DeSanta talks about adventure racing. That's where he and I met was back in the 90s. I, I think we met somewhere in like Switzerland in the Discovery Channel World Championships or something. And and, uh, you know, that sport is all about, there's a team, there's always a team of at least four people that are trying to move across, you know, water and mountains and jungles and deserts, you know, together, you have to stay together. And so I think I learned a lot about team dynamics. I'm not saying I'm always good at it. You know, I'm a, I'm an absolute bull in a China shop sometimes. And if my single-minded focus is on getting the team from here to here, there are times when uh, I may not be pleasant to be around in that in that situation because I want to move us forward. Hopefully, through these years, I've learned two big lessons where where that is concerned, and that is to uh, apologize more often. <laughs> you know, because you can you can be a hard ass and you can you know yell at people and you can try to push them, but it is also important to acknowledge when maybe you step over the line sometimes. Yeah. Um, and number two, to actually not not put myself in that position as often, uh, because as you said a minute ago, the way we get through hard times in life is through fellowship, it's through camaraderie, it's through actually feeling like we're in something together, and not that we're individuals taking on a challenge, you know, together and almost competing against each other, but rather we're you know, we are a team, we're a team and, and whoever the weakest person is at any given time, that's who everybody else should be trying to, to pull up. And I mean, you know, look, look at the Spartan racing community and I won't, I won't put in these statistics or obviously no names, but you don't even know, man, I have had dozens, if not, if not hundreds of Spartans out there who have approached me uh, with questions around addiction and sobriety, or just an acknowledgement saying, Hey, you know, I've got three years or I've got, you know, three months sober and that ability to actually step out. And it's why I make myself available to those people is I let them know that I'm clean and sober so that they don't feel like it's some, I don't know, crazy thing they have to hide, but rather it's something that they can share uh, with their community. Well, and, and I think the reason that it uh, appeals so much to them, the other thing that you've mentioned is the idea that, uh, 
it's not like this has made all the the struggle go away. It's not like I struggled then and then I solved that problem. I don't struggle now. Uh, you know, like like you say, life is struggle. There's always going to be struggle. But the idea that you've reframed it, and uh, and and that's a big part of what you know. I know Joe preaches and has has made a big difference in my life is when you're seeking out struggles, but but choosing your struggles, it it actually trains you for when struggles come that you didn't seek out in life. You know. Um, there's always going to be something that you have to deal with. And if you can reflect back to that horrible situation you put yourself in on that mountain that you got through, uh, it gives you some perspective and some, some strength to draw on. So, so tell me about um, a couple of experiences. If you think back to, you know, you're halfway across the Sahara Desert, you're in somewhere else in bitter cold, you're in the middle of an adventure race where everything's gone wrong. And you think, what am I doing here? Give, give, me, give me a story that is, uh, is one of those times where you're just like, what have I done? And then tell me what you've learned from it looking back on that. Yeah, man, you, you made my brain just like fire right there because like 10 stories came to me all at once. But the, you know, the fact of the matter is, I, I say this all the time, even now, like I enter Badwater or I enter 100 mile races for one reason and one reason only. And that is to reach a point at some time during that event where I want to quit where I'm absolutely certain that I can't possibly go on and then find a way to move past that because yeah. that's the only thing you remember. Yeah, man, you've done tons of this too. You know, you don't remember the easy times you have. You don't remember like, you know, nobody runs a marathon and says, man, those first 15 miles, they were awesome. They, I just, what they say is like at 17 miles, I, I didn't think I was going to be able to go on, you know, and I, but I walked for a minute, I drank a cup of water or Gatorade and I can't, you know, those are the moments we remember. So I focus on trying to actually put myself in positions where I'm going to reach those moments again, because that's where the good stuff is. That's where I get to continue to learn. And I, I've done a lot through the years. So have you, but every time I've never done an easy hundred miler. So <laughs> every time I step to the line of one of those, I know already I'm going to suffer. Yeah. So when I look at the Sahara, you know what came to my mind? I'm just going to tell you, it's not really answering your question, but I also use, I, I love humor. We like to put ourselves, and a lot of people listening, we like to put ourselves in really hard situations. But you know what? I chose to be there. What am I going to do? Complain about it? Like even to myself? Like I put myself in that position. So I think I think about there's this one situation where my two running teammates, Ray and Kevin, both were suffering. Um, Ray was in the tent. He had stomach issues. He's running outside the tent, you know, every five minutes to, you know, find a bush to use. And it was terrible. And he's he's literally in the tent groaning. And there's a camera crew watching. And like we're and I walk up and I'm like, I, I'm, I just said, like, hey, Ray, um, is it OK if. I distribute your stuff, like if you don't make it. <laughs> and like, it was just one of those moments where like everybody on the film crew laughed. He, he of course said, screw you. Yeah. And, and like it, it lightened the whole mood because there's, there's times when you also worry about ego. Everybody's got an ego, you know? Mm -hmm. So you worry about how you look. You have TV cameras around a lot of times, you know? So nobody likes to look what they perceive as weak or uh, as incapable of, of toughing it out. Nobody wants to look that way. But the fact is, we all are that way once in a while, if we're honest. So if you share those experiences with other people, it again reminds them that, you know, even the, even the toughest athletes, you know, have their moments where that toughness uh, isn't always the first thing that comes out. You know, sometimes now, I'll tell you another a, a quick thing, and I don't know if you do this, but I'll post something on social media that it's a beautiful picture with a great little story and an inspirational thing, and I'll get a certain amount of response, right? Yeah. Two days later, I'll repost something that says, man, I'm having a really hard time. There's this going on. Here's what's happening. You know, I don't know what to do. And like, I'll get like four times the engagement yeah. because- Everybody wants to, you know, we want to be part of a community that loves and helps each other, even if we're tough athletes. And, yeah. and I think that that's the, 
that's the key to this kind of community right here is, is deep down people want to help each other. And sometimes the best way you can do that is to, uh, is to share your, your own struggles. Ab absolutely. And especially someone like yourself who um, you're, you're out there really raising the bar for yourself again and again. And so for somebody who, who sees that and thinks, well, he's just always had it easy. Of course, he can go and do that. For them to know your story and realize, oh, wow, okay, I'm kind of down in this valley right now. And, and, I, and I, I see that it's not just surviving. You know, it's not just getting the other end of this and surviving, although it sometimes feels like that. But there's an opportunity to thrive, to get to the other end of that. And, and there's a big life available if you're willing to, to go out and, and lean into that. And then, and then, again, the other thing is when you share, you know, it's not just that I used to struggle and now I don't. You know, when, when, when you share that no matter how well you plan something, there's, you're still going to run into failure. You're still going to run into um, hardship that you never bargained for. And um, so, so, so looking at that and looking, so actually that's, that's a question I've asked you to reflect on how the, the lessons you've learned now, um, you know, help, help you with your sobriety. What's something that you learned from your, your addiction struggles before that helps you now? Like when you look back on then and, and Charlie then, what did Charlie then learn that has helped shape Charlie now? Man. What a great question. I, I think, um, you know, look, what happens to us uh, isn't nearly as important as what we do about it. <laughs> yep. So I spent a lot of time back then searching for the why, like, why am I an addict? You know, how did this happen to me? You know, like why this feels unfair. Like I, I was mired in that for a really long time, like this need to understand where it came from. Is it genetics? Is it, you know, is it environmental? Is it something I did wrong? Do I have somebody else I can blame here? You yeah, know, sure. like that was really, you know, and, and I finally had a sponsor and this is what it takes in life. A lot of times uh, is mentorship. You know, I had a, I had a sponsor in 12 step recovery who was in his seventies, you know, and I'm 30 years old. You know, I asked him what the secret was to, to long-term sobriety. Like, what's the secret? I'll never forget, dude. He's like, I tell you what, come to the meeting tonight. So I show up 30 minutes early and I'm like, okay, John, what, you know, I'm ready to talk. And he's like, okay, yeah. Hey, do me a favor though. Go over there. You see those coffee pots? I need five pots of coffee for the meeting tonight. So if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and do that. And then we'll talk later. So I go over and I make the coffee and I'm doing all this and everything. And it's eight o'clock and the meeting starts and you know, then it ends and I come up to him. I'm like, Hey, John, he's like, yeah, you know, I got to go. Why don't you show up tomorrow, 30 minutes early and we'll talk then. And you see where this is going, right? I showed up every day for 30 straight days and I ended up just making the coffee and there was no secret. Yeah. There's no secret. You show up, you know, you show up, you serve other people without the need for pats on the back, or wow, you're amazing, or whatever. You do it because whatever your gift is, as I always say, to keep it, you have to give it away. Yep. You know, and that's a lesson I learned from him. You know, you 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 got to share whatever you can with other people. And if you do that without expectation of being rewarded or being put on a pedestal, then your life has a good chance of being good, no matter what kind of ups and downs you have. That is an absolutely perfect uh, summary for this call uh, or for, the, for this, uh, this, this interview. Um, I, sometimes what people will say things and I'll go back and I'll say, so if I can just, you know, paraphrase that and I don't have to do that at all. You nailed it. You know, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's service and it's showing up. Is it, is it, I just did what I said I wouldn't do. I summarize it. Is it service and showing yeah. up? Yeah, that's it, dude. That's all you got to do, man. And you see, and wait to see what magic happens. And it's not, it doesn't always feel life changing because real change comes slowly. There's yeah. no there's no magic that's like boom today I'm different than I was yesterday. It takes showing up every single day and being willing to learn and to help others and if you do those two things, you know, three things, show up, learn and help others learn, you know, you'll have a successful life. Perfect. Hey, you said there that, you know, you realize it wasn't about a pat in the back. It wasn't about a, hey, you're great. It wasn't about a secret. 
but I want to ask you to come back so I can give you a big pat in the back so you can tell us a secret about some of these unbelievable adventures you're taking on next. I, I, I sat beside you on a plane from um, somewhere to Denver, and I remember <laughs> you were telling me about yeah. this, this, this next huge thing. And, and I think, r remind me, I, I know you're a couple years older than me. How old are you right now? I'm 58. Yeah, because I, I think it was a year and a half ago, and you said I'm going to be 57. And, and I'm taking on this thing, and I know, you know most 30-year-olds would say, okay, that's already behind me right and uh and i know the pandemic's pushed everything back a little bit but we're going to do a second segment and uh and i want you to tell people about some of the stuff that you're up to does that sound cool fantastic i'd love to awesome well hey brother thank you so much for this one right now uh, i know there's a lot of uh, valuable lessons in there for people and uh, you've made it really really simple so thank you thanks for listening to this episode of the endurance series on spartan up podcast Spartan Up is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and La Ruta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation, tactics to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Headspace. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com spartan for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by our friends Juliet and Kelly Sterrett at The Ready State. Get a free trial and then save 10% for life by using the code SPARTAN10 when you register at thereadystate.com.